Now, relating to the Buddha, our supreme guide is absolutely vital. As we do in the you know, daily recollections we recite. But in that way, see, we remember that the Buddha is not our God. An omnipotent creator, invisibly hanging around, judging whether we're good or bad, but our teacher. In a few days in India, um, I was quoting, quoting the other day, that the Thagathas point the way you yourself must make the effort. And one of the young monks were asking me, whoa, whoa, that's a cool quote. Which Lama said that? And I said, oh, this teacher, you might not know his name. What was the name? Um, the Buddha. <laughs> you know, it's because these are the kind of stuff we gotta know. Genuine devotion to the Buddha comes when there's, you know, arises when there's genuine resonance in what he, with what he taught. Uh, there's, there's one example of that kind. Um, there was a man called what's Pancadza, what's it? One of the 84 Masidas. Pankadza, yes, Pankadza. Okay, here we go, story time. Once upon a time, long, long ago in India, there was this man called Pankaza, who was born in a very powerful family, an area where they worshipped Shiva, you know, the worldly Hindu god. And Pankaza had a strong connection with Jirisik, the Bodhisattva of compassion, uh, from his previous lives. Uh, so due to those karma, those blessings, he had a strong um, potential for Dharma practice. Uh, so when he was still young, someone created a Chenerisik statue uh, around a lotus pond near his area. Um, I, I don't know who, who made it, some Mahasiddha passing by, I think. Uh, however, the locals, not knowing that it was a Chenerisik, a Buddhist statue, he thought it was a, a statue of Shiva. So, and the statue was very special and was consecrated and very special. So, for 12 years, every single day, three times a day, Pangaza made offerings to the Genesis statue, thinking it was Shiva. So, he had, you know, offering flowers, placing flowers on the head. Um, with strong devotion to the worldly God. Anyway, one day, who should mosey on into town but the great Nagarjuna saw this happening. So Nagarjuna decided to make his own offering. He picked up uh, a lotus flower and casually held his hand like this, or something, and then Miraculously, the statue, the Jainic statue, picked up the, the flower and put it on his head. Said something like, cheers bro. Let's catch up sometime and talk about emptiness and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, Pankaza saw that happen. And he was like, what the heck man? I've been offering you loads of flowers three times a day for the past 12 years. You never took one of my offerings. The only thing that developed was moss growing on your neck. This dude strides up with one lousy flower and you pick it up and put it on your crown and start having a chat. How's that fair? Something like that. <laughs> anyway, Chansey replied, well, your actions didn't delight me because your intention wasn't pure. So something clicked in Pangadza. 
He immediately rushed towards Nagarjuna, prostrated to him, and respectfully asked to become his student. Then Nagarjuna taught him the real integrations of vision and conduct. He said that um, you cannot accomplish the spiritual path with just faith. Even with just altruism, you need to see the reality with unbiased knowledge. So just you know, taking that simple instruction to heart, Pangaza went back to the lotus pond uh, in front of the Genesis statue, did the Genesis sadhana for seven days. And just in seven days, he attained realization, became one of the 84 Mahasiddhas, and spread the Dharma far and wide. This shows that although some people might be Buddhist in name, but worship the, you know, Buddha and Bodhisattvas as you know, gods and without real understanding. So, where for, whereas for those who have real um, scientific mind and develop real understanding, like Nagarjuna said, unbiased knowledge. With that, we'll actually really reap the benefits of their devotion to the enlightened ones.